Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a new video. This is going to be a good one. So I tried to shoot this actually the last couple of days. I could not find my Mark Silvestri Twitter uh, <laughs> folder. I pulled all of this stuff off of Twitter maybe six months ago. So um, it's not the most current previews and sneak peeks that they've done for his new Batman book, but it's a lot of really, really good Mark Silvestri art sketches, uh, pen and ink, a lot of stuff of him inking himself. And uh, I thought it would be a nice way to sort of whet our appetite for the upcoming um, book that he's doing for DC with Batman, Joker, Harley Quinn. It looks amazing. We've all been waiting for it for, I don't even know, four years, six years. Uh, I wasn't sure. It, I wasn't sure what kind of a series it was. I'm under the impression I think that it's four or six issues. Um, but uh, I, I don't follow much comic news on my own, so I, you know, when it comes out, I'll obviously be getting it, and I'm excited to see them all. Um, like most of you, the hope is that at some point they release a um, artist edition style book with all of his art in black and white but all right let's get into this this is going to be really fun and uh i was happy i i thought of it last night i was like you know what i know what external hard drive this stuff is on it's on like a small uh, it's a smaller size one i have like 14 external hard drives so in my defense there's a lot of shit <laughs> so all right we got batman's face this is so good so cool god man he's a maniac I mean, this stuff is so, got so much kinetic energy. Oh man, I'm excited to do this video. I'm not even kidding when I say it too. I'm pumped. I haven't looked at this stuff in forever. So this is going to be really, really cool. Uh, when I first started collecting comics was when Image Comics was getting going. It had already started. So I was not late to the game, but... You know, they all had a few comic books out when I started collecting them. And uh, Mark really was impressive, even for someone that was new to collecting comics and, and was kind of getting their feet wet in terms of what different comic book styles were. I love McFarlane, but boy, I mean, um, <laughs> Mark was like, wow, this is some crazy stuff. He drew beautiful women. Um, the men were handsome. He could draw big guys, you know, cute stuff. And um, it really just hit a lot of, like, great notes for me. So um, been a fan, really, since I started collecting, you know. I've probably joked about this before in other videos, but I remember... Um, you know, when I started collecting comics, I got like excited about drawing immediately um, and was like trying to, you know, see if I could copy some of the drawings in the comic books just to get some sort of uh, connection to myself and like what I was seeing and responding to. It'd be like, you know, like if you heard a song that you liked and you wanted to learn to play it on guitar just so that you'd feel a little more connected to the song, but then also, you know, you felt like maybe you were sort of getting the wheels in motion for yourself. But <laughs> Mark's stuff was always, it was so confusing to try to learn from because he'd have like folds on clothes and they would just be like this kind of thing where if you don't really know what he's doing, it just looks like a million shapes. Um, and, you know, it still can in some ways, but uh, yeah, it's wild, wild stuff. Very, it would be difficult to, to learn from Mark only. <laughs> so I gave that up fast. That was like one drawing. It's ballistic. It's the very last page of one of the first four issues of Cyber Force, I think. Um, although it might have been issue number one of the ongoing. I'm going to shut this. Oh, it's barking next door. Um, but uh, it's her standing in water, kind of a purpley green splash page. If you know the books, you'll know exactly which piece I'm talking about. But her pants are like all these like triangles. I was like, well, oh, man, this is so kick-ass. God. But yeah, I figured with the anticipation of this book coming up, I couldn't think of a better time to spoil myself and, and uh, look at the these. Uh, this was all stuff that I got from Twitter. The whole this whole folder is just you know me spending an hour going through his Twitter and saving like everything. <laughs> I'm that guy. <laughs> I, I was like, it's like 
my hard drives look like this so that you can watch these videos in style. Batman Joker. Number one cover. Whoo! If you don't follow me on Patreon, I would highly, highly recommend it. There's between seven and 800 videos. I actually shot almost two hours worth of drawing videos this morning. So I got a lot of practice in myself, but we're going through the force, drawing with force, like dynamic figure drawing, and also how to draw female superheroes. So two different, two different books and, um, you know, a lot of really good shit to learn. And there's just hundreds and hundreds of videos. They're all long too. Uh, this is great. I actually use Copic multi-liners with my own stuff. Not all the time. I, I've kind of, I, I bounce back and forth between a few different tools, but if I'm going to use pens, I'll either use Copic multi-liners, um, this exact one, the SP. I use the 0.1 probably the most. And then 0.2, uh, if I'm getting, um, f like feeling like I'm drowning in quicksand, moving slow, uh, or I'll use Rapidographs, Hunt 102, or Brushes. But uh, this is great. I forgot about this. God, Mark is so good. <laughs> it's really crazy. He he's like a he's like a fine artist illustrator. That draws comics and not not just because this stuff is detailed it's the way that he draws there's like if you like any of the like where the image group is together and they talk about like um you know mark gets a lot of respect people that know know <laughs> if you know you know god like i didn't remember this either I, there's a part of me that thinks that I actually did do a video at one point with this stuff. I may not have, but I kind of felt like I did. It was sort of probably the reason that I grabbed this stuff originally. Um, but uh, you could definitely find more Mark Silvestri videos on my channel. I bet there's five or six. He's probably... I, I feel like in some ways I've done probably like... I'd say Bernie Wrightson, Mignola, and Silvestri are probably the highest quantity of artists. But... Um, We've gone all over the place, but yeah, Mark is so good. I've done quite a few on Capullo too, because I, I Capullo to me is a very interesting artist, also, just because he's he's so good. He draws draws so well. No, this is great. I think <laughs> I'm trying to remember if I did it or not. It was I thought of this the other day and it made me kind of laugh. But I, I uh, a while back I did a Mephisto um, like demo over Mark because I'd never inked Mark before and I was like I should I should just ink something and maybe it'd be cool to do. But I think I wrote my name friend like F R I and then E N D like you know the the way that he splits is up into three tiers. Mine's two because it's only six letters, but. Yep, she's pretty. Pretty, pretty. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Honestly, like, like seriously, because I know that they'll have a lot of variant covers for the book and whatnot. I, I personally think that they should have come out guns blazing on the first issue, and, and I, don't, I don't know if they're doing it or not. I would have released the director's cut the same day as the regular book and just had people dropping like 25 bucks on them. Cause, cause it's like, you're going to buy two of the color one. You'd buy two at least of the black and white one. You know what I mean? They could have, they could have like doubled down. They'll have at least probably six covers for the book. If not more, I have no idea, but man, you want to milk this for all it's worth right away. You know, strike while the iron is hot. And, uh, um, so much time, you know, so much time uh, in terms of fans waiting for this. It's not to say that Mark was working on this every second of the the time that we waited, but um, 
you know, god damn, this is so cool. This, there's really a lot for me to learn from this. It's interesting. So as a, a lot of you know, like I, I was like, I had a lot of work to do and I've been drawing like literally like 12 and 13 hour days. I'm not messing around. So, you know, um, and, uh, uh, one of the things that I'm working on right now that's a, a constant frustration for me is that, that I can pencil really, really fast, but I don't know a way to ink and finish pieces any quicker than the amount of detail calls for. And it's frustrating to me because it's like everything that I draw to finish it takes me at least several hours if not days and that's it doesn't frustrate me but it's just i wanted to have a fast gear but you look at something like this and you go well this looks fast quickly drawn doesn't necessarily mean that it's fast to do it just means that the lines are applied quickly but um there's just no way to do a lot of detail and have it quick I, I, I've never worked around Mark and I've never, I've only met him just briefly, but like, I'm sure there's fans that have had, probably spent more time around Mark than I have. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know like what something like this, like how long does this take for him to do? Cause just drawing this would take a while. I mean, I could lay it out in a couple of minutes, but to draw it all would take hours and then to ink it all would take, you know, more hours. Like, you know, you're talking like a couple of days. And I, I can't imagine that he's spending a couple of days on these things. And then, and, and, and also the thing is, is you can keep track of it in terms of all total working because I mean, I used to share an office with Jim Lee and for like Jim, he'd be very busy. So he may only draw during the, like say from 10 o'clock in the morning till six at night, he may only be sitting down and drawing for a couple of hours, but that night he'll go home and stay up all night and finish it. So, you know, it may be done in 24 hours or in two days, but what was the actual accumulative amount of hours that were spent working on it? Sometimes with drawing though too, you just have to like draw something and then let it set for a half hour, come back and look at it, kind of reassess what you've got going on. All of a sudden you notice, oh shit, this hand on the left is bigger than the other one or something is off and then you know you got to erase it and start over or if you work digitally i guess you could nudge it move it around and whatnot but man this is so kick-ass this is really interesting too so he does post like step-by-steps on his um twitter sometimes and you really get a um an opportunity to um see uh, like how he goes about building up the detail Look how fine these lines are here. This is crazy that this is like inks. Here's the pencils. There may be a few pieces in here that are just random other artists. It looked it looked to me like I, I had like there was a little bit of Chris Boccolo in here, um, some Duncan Fregredo, just I think uh, just stuff I was looking at on Twitter the, the day that I saved these. So there could be a few little things that pop up here and there. It's really nice. It's crazy. Like he does his guns. They're almost like 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 a, <laughs> a cardboard cutout. It's really, really funny that there's not like he doesn't like he's not tempted to just put in the other like uh, like lines. But, you know, that's that's his trick for setting them up. That gives him enough information to be able to work forward. But wow, it's really wild. I never noticed that with this stuff that he does that. I wonder if he considers that the center line. Yeah, kind of. I think that is. I think that's like the center line of the gun that he can build out for, around it. Or it could be an edge. It could, it could be a side plane. I got quite a few files. So some con sketches. They're always fun to see. Pretty, pretty. Is this, oh, I was going to say this is an 11 by 17. That's the other thing, too, is is <laughs> a 11 by 17 piece of artboard working traditionally. Like, and I've, I've inked thousands of pages. I'm not, not exaggerating when I say that. I've, I've probably inked between two and 3,000 pages in my career, if not maybe a little bit more. So I've done it. I've done it a million times. Um, man, when you're penciling and inking yourself on 11 by 17 board... <laughs> 
it is a lot of work. If the shit is detailed, it's like, god damn, you're like, it's like a, a, a war of inches. Man, this is so kick-ass. Oh, sorry, I mean to do that. I was trying to zoom in. I hit backspace, I think, instead of uh, zoom. God dang, he is just a savage. So, wait, hold on a sec. Well, hopefully we get to see. I'm curious of what other tools he uses to ink at his show. God dang. <laughs> you know it's really weird too like okay so that's a sketch cover i you, you forget sometimes that mark is a really really tall guy but like like with with this hand in the shot it like literally looks like it's the size of a trading card but that's how enormous the guy is he's like 10 feet tall the people don't know that about him no he's he's maybe six four I don't think he's 6'5". I'm going to say he's 6'3 or 6'4". Pretty big dude. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, his hand makes the comic look like it's like a freaking trading card. <laughs> or I'm just so used to looking at artist edition books that now a, a regular comic to me looks small. That is part of it, honestly. But, yeah, he really draws pretty girls' faces. Boy, he's got it down. Nice tiny nose. Cool eyebrows. Great hair. Oh, look at this. Damn. God, he's so good. Sorry, my uh, fan on my computer is kind of turning on. Oh, Ripclaw. Or maybe this is a, is a, is it Ripclaw? Drawing is so much fun. Oh my god, I love it. It used to be more torturous. Now it's only like partially torturous. <laughs> I, I, it does make me wonder because as as you go along and you actually start to like like have a professional penciling career, like I'm I'm just celebrating like two years drawing professionally, so I'm still kind of on the front end of everything. But um. Yeah, like things that you assumed, like experiences, like you go, oh, you know, like, I wonder, like, for someone like Mark or Jim Lee or David Finch, I well, Finch is pretty candid about it, like, like he still struggles with stuff, he's so good, but, you know, he still will admittedly say that, like, you know, stuff is hard, or, like, he's not sure how to do something or whatnot, but you, like, as a fan or, like, someone, you, you kind of assume that at some point you get over that hurdle, and it's, it's like everything is natural and just like, you know, you don't, you know, crash your car every time you drive it to go to the grocery store. You kind of think like professional artists are like that too, but I don't know, you know, I don't know if like that feeling of like, oh man, I'm not sure what to do here. If it ever completely goes away, there's always something to learn, which is fun. I didn't even realize that this is uh, the book I worked on. Look, there's my name right there. I'm famous. <laughs> This, is, this, this book spent more time with Mark Silvestri than I have in my life. <laughs> All right. This guy is cool, man. I would totally hang out with this person. You kind of go, what is going on? What's in the bag? What's in the box, man? Hand is great. Damn. How the fuck? I don't know how he does this. It, like, because if you go for this and you're not, like, at a level where you could pull it off, it just looks like bullshit. Like, some of it will look cool. Like, you could definitely, you can get some of it going. It's like riding a skateboard where it's like you kind of got the balance and, like, parts are working. You'll always inevitably have that one spot where you just, you lose it. And the, you, the line is the wrong direction or there's too many close together or whatever it is. And then you're kind of like, ah, oh, man. Could teach a college course on this how to draw scratchy like mark 
my only concern about some of this stuff and, and Sharpie is a great tool in terms of like actually getting like some cool like lines. This these these Sharpie backgrounds that he's doing on some of the pages are not gonna age well. That Sharpie will turn purple or blue or something funky. So it's a shame that it's not done in indie ink. But you wouldn't get that same look, but you can see already here it's purpling. Um, and that like again in ten or fifteen years these originals are gonna be fried. The only thing that you could really do, he should he should hire a professional inker to do it, is you go over it with real black indie ink now as soon as possible. You could do it later, but the the problem is is alcohol based markers will bleed over time. So the this this ink will slowly do weird things as the alcohol evaporates and stuff like that, so If you ever see old originals from like the 80s or 70s where they used a lot of, uh, well, even the Dan Green stuff over Mark, like uh, I've seen originals where like things have almost vanished completely, little telephones and stuff like that, the inked and like a different pen, um, it'll really get light. I owned, I, I at one point, someone was selling on eBay Mark Silvestri X-Men pages for like 20 bucks a piece. They were no main characters. But it was Dan Green and Sylvester, and so I bought a bunch of them because I just wanted to see their work in person from that era, no matter what it was. If it was cops searching a bedroom, it didn't matter. I just wanted to see the art. Uh, and, um, yeah, it was really interesting. You could you could clearly tell what was done in, like, um, alcohol-based um, pen versus, uh, you know, whatever, higher quality. This is fucking great. I love this. He, he is so good. <laughs> ba -na -na -na. He is so good. Ba -na 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 -na. Did I mention he is good? Ba -na -na -na. He's so fucking good. <laughs> Russ works likes when I crack myself up. I try not to do it. I'm, I don't really think that I'm that funny, but it's probably more of a nervous laugh. They have their dogs, their cute dogs that they love so much. This might have been for his wife. But it's it's a really really cool drawing. I've got a guy at my local grocery store that wants me to draw his cats, and I'm like, pets aren't as easy. Like people just think it's like you're just gonna sit down and knock out a drawing of like a pet. Maybe someone like Mark can, but fur and stuff like that is his own thing. But Mark is the master of pen, and so he can get in and get all scribbly, ghibli. Man, I, 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 the only way that I could think that you could develop this if you weren't Mark is you would just, you would, you would have to, like, it wouldn't be a bad way to practice it, honestly, would be draw a few pieces like this, like headshots like this, scan it and print them out in like blue line. I mean, you could do it over original pencils, but, but the, the challenge I think is more inking them than drawing them. Uh, but then, um, just go bananas, you know, print out 10 Batman headshots that are this angle or just try to render them as like quickly as it looks like he does or whatever this technique is. Um, and that way you're not just ruining a bunch of, um, you know, like where you've spent time penciling each one and whatnot. Once you get it down, then you can start just doing them over your original sketches, but it's an option. The other night I was watching the VZA channel and I was checking out some of Jim Lee's two minute head sketches that he was doing. And it was really, really fascinating seeing, um, seeing them from new perspective. Cause I don't think I'd watched one of his VZA videos in like a year or so. So I've penciled a lot since the last time I've seen one pretty much a completely different artist, honestly. Um, and uh, it was really, really interesting. It was interesting to see where he started the pieces. It was interesting to see how he would work through them, like the order of things, the size relationships, you know, all the whole thing. It was really fascinating. But again, I was watching the two-minute sketches. They're, they're short videos of him just knocking out, like, you know, uh, head sketches for people at, like, shows. But it was it was really interesting. These look like they'd take a little bit longer, and, and then Mark is doing a little bit more of a pencil drawing underneath, but, um, man, they're great. I like this Joker. He's he's cool looking. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's really, really cool. Sexy lady! Is that a sketch cover? Oh, it's a printed sketch cover. Or, I don't know. It's hard to tell, like, I from this scan, I, I mean, I see pencils and inks on it. I, I just don't know if this was a blank cover or it's printed as a sketch cover. It says variant sketch cover exclusive, so. <clears throat> oh, this is that one piece again. Whatever, buyer. You could have got me to sign it, probably. But it's your loss. <laughs> I've shared this story before, but it's actually pretty funny. Uh, so before I broke in, I don't even know if I was... I must have been drawing a little bit at this point, but I went to a comic book convention up in, like, L.A. or Ocean... Ocean not Oceanside. What, Long, Long Beach, something like that. I think it was in Anaheim, though. And uh, I was standing in line to uh, get... Joe Casada's autograph on Sword of Azrael. And I remember saying in line, and it's like, man, talk about eating your own words. I was like, who's the other guy up there? And they go, oh, that's the inker. And I, I go, who would get an inker signature on the book? <laughs> I didn't know. Again, I, was, I wasn't like, I had no idea what I was talking about. It's just some jackass offhanded comment i didn't say it to like a lot of people i said it to the person i was with but i remember saying it and i thought that 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 was ironic that i ended up being an inker but then you know the thing is is my expectations were low if someone doesn't want me to sign a book i can't take it personally because i was that that same person i i did i get i don't know i can't remember if i got jimmy palmiotti to sign it although it was inked by kevin nolan but uh, palmiotti was there and, and again, no no offense to Jimmy Palmiotti. He's actually a really, really nice guy and a good a good inker. Um, but uh, yeah, that was... But I do have sort of Azrael signed by Kevin Nolan, ironically. This is crazy. It almost feels like a different artist. It's like tighter, tighter than some of the other stuff that he did because the, the lines around this guy's face are all in and... It almost feels like at times Mark breaks the lines up a bit more. Here's the tools of the trade. Is this at a comic book convention or is this uh... a... <laughs> this must be at home. I can't imagine. Well, yeah, it looks. this looks like home because there's like a tabaret down here and the little like a mat underneath the thing. So, let's see. What are these? Oh, gosh. He uses the Bic White. I don't like these things at all. Um, a jelly Roll Pen. Those are tough. I actually have a video on how to get those things rejuvenated. I don't know what these are. Prismacolor. Is this a brush pen? Let me know if you know what these three pens are. That one says Prismacolor, but I'm not... Oh, it is a brush. Okay. And then this looks like an eraser. Like a like a fine point eraser. He's got needed eraser. This and this. I have I have a bunch of these. I don't have the big one. Normally, I I use these Japanese erasers. It smell like peppermint for to erase my pages. But I'll use Arc Gum to lighten my pencils before I tighten them. Like if I have a rough in. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, see, like, God, ima imagine getting handed this and then having to ink it. <sighs> Man, that's some hard shit. Seriously. Like, what do you do up here? I mean, he'll ink it like a boss. I, I wonder if he inked this one. We'll see. I kind of hope that he did. God, that's crazy. I mean, I could definitely work out techniques. It's not like I couldn't ink this. I'm just saying that, like, man, this thing has got 
there's a lot of a lot of challenges ahead for, for someone else. That's nice. Nice lean Batman. Ooh, this is really good. I like this a lot. Man, that's great. Wow. Dude wields magic. I, I've i never seen him draw in person either. He is one of those people where, like, I was kind of joking when I said, like, he wields magic. But when people draw really good, it, it, it does almost seem like magic that they can create this stuff out of thin air. I mean, it's it's just so impressive. But, man, she's just cute. She looks cool. The energy and the design of this is great. It's just a beautiful sketch, man. It's really nice. Uh, was, I was kind of trying to study Bill Sienkiewicz a few weeks ago, but it's just like he has so many different styles that he's worked in, but it, he captures the spirit too, that real... Again, I'm just trying... I want to have a fast... I want to have a fast gear for inking. And right now, you know what it is too? Not that anyone gives a shit in a Mark Silvestri video, but because I ink professionally so long and I've worked in so many different styles, my go-to inking style, if I'm inking comic book, what I, in my mind, I switch gears when I think I'm drawing comic book, inking comic book stuff. I go to a style that isn't the style that I want on my own work. It's, it's, I, I mean, I'm not going to break it down here, but like when I ink my own work, the inking style that I use is a very time consuming, very detailed style, but I want an element of this in it. And that's nothing that I ever did as an inker. As, you know, just the people that I inked didn't draw like this. God damn. But yeah, so it's, I've been able to address the problem and now it's just, uh, or identify the problem. Now it's addressing it. And coming up with a third inking style, we'll call it. I have my go-to inking styles that I used to do on other people. I have my black drawing inking style, which is incredibly time-consuming and super, super detailed. People love that, but I have to have this third gear that, that doesn't exist in me right now at a level of consistency that I want. But the answers are in things like this, for sure. He really draws pretty girls. He always just, man, they're so cool looking. That's a nice Harley. She looks like she'd mess, it's like Harley Witchblade. <laughs> That's cool. That is the thick ass book. The compendium is the chunky. Oh, uh, Leia. He puts in his guidelines. It's cool to see. Batman. Doo -doo 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 Ooh, that's cool. I like like how he did this bat symbol and did it in a really wild kind of warped perspective. That's neat. Damn. <laughs> I was talking to someone the other day about drawing eyebrows, and I was saying that, like, you know, there's a point where the eyebrow lashes sort of switch. Like, they kind of come in this way, and then they they kind of have this other thing. And sometimes you'll have even, like, some lines going, like, this way. Uh, but uh, it's amazing to me <laughs> how many lines he has just in this area right here. Like, if you could count, like, each individual line, there's, like, so many. It's hysterical. It's, like... It's probably, I don't even know, just in this <laughs> vicinity. That's a lot of shit. It looks like he maybe initially went in with the thin lines 
in the eyebrow. He may have done it after, but it looks like there's like thin lines that he ran kind of through this, and then he took like his one of his brush pens and sort of smacked in the thicker like the mass of the the eyebrow. But God dang, it's cool looking. Wow. Oh, so his is more of a little like the in the other photo. This uh, looked like a gray eraser, but I think it is one of the white, um, the white erasers like Mars. Mars is similar to them. Man, that's cool. He does some really interesting buildings too. I like this like grouping of buildings right here is really really cool. And then this is fun because it's got like a little bit more of a gothic kind of vibe. And then this is cool with the water tower. And then this is got a different vibe, but also a water tower. This looks more like this. And then these look like older buildings. Really really good choices. Like these are really. It's just got a nice variety, and they're they all tell little stories. You know. And that's fun, you know, fun to see and fun to look at. Wow. This is like, this almost reminds me of like a Ted McKeever drawing. If we know Ted's stuff, the way that this is like, it almost looks like it's like carved out of like wood. Wow. Man, that's cool. Sorry. It had been long enough that I hadn't seen these that, that like a lot of these, like I remember them as I'm seeing them, but they weren't ones that like if I was going through my memory of, of what I had seen for the book, like, like this kind of, I don't remember, but seeing it now I do, but man, it's really cool. This is exciting. This is an exciting book to come out. You know, I've kind of kept my expectations in check just because I was my concern like a while back before it was really announced it was coming out was, you know, you hope that that it wouldn't just never come out. Um, but now that it is coming out, I've kind of like just gone like, well, when it comes out, you'll get it. And then, you know, but this is going to be pretty badass. And again, you know, this is a good testament to how long this stuff takes. Is, you know, I was joking about Mark's hand being big with the comic books, but if you look here, look at how big a page is compared to his hand and how small those comic book covers felt. I mean, this is really, can be really time consuming stuff to do. You know, a little area like this can take an hour, you know, not even kidding, you know, hour, maybe not for Mark, but I'm just saying for like, for me when I ink stuff like this. If I'm going at a not not a slow pace, but you know, this could easily be six hours of inking to just ink this top panel. Hour, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven hours just to ink that. And there's more down here too, so. And again, that's not a prediction of how long it takes Mark to do it. I I don't have any idea. I couldn't even guess. I don't remember this either. Ooh. Cool. I wonder, because I do this sometimes, it's like I'll have the silhouette of something that I want in. Um, and then before, like if I was going to um, ink this building, I might go in and actually draw like some of the windows and just make sure that I have like a little bit more information down before I ink it. But I don't know if he needs to do that before he draws with ink. So people kind of get confused of like the words inking versus drawing with ink because it is two different things. Inking can mean the same thing, but inking generally means that you're inking over like a finished drawing. Drawing and ink is far more of a tightrope walk with no net. So you have to have enough information where you feel comfortable to finish the piece drawing it in ink, which is inking, but it's, you know, can be far more risky. This is cool to see. 
So this might help him too, okay? So he's got a, quite a bit of the line drawing down. Now if he takes his brush and goes in and puts more folds, you know, like a thousand folds and, you know, sleeves on this guy and all the different things that he's got going on, he's got at least the directional lines of the folds. So, like, I mean, not that he wouldn't know which direction they're going, but things like that could help him go in and block in his black shapes quicker. As opposed to, like, some people will when they draw an area they're finishing like they put all the lighting on this and as they move up here they're they're finishing the drawing like finch doesn't do that either he blocks stuff in and then builds it up and passes man that's so kick-ass ooh wolvie Two thousand sixteen. What? Oh, that's really cool too. Damn. I don't oh, probably the inside of the back cave? What do you think? Man, that is cool looking. I'm excited to see this page in the comic. Damn. <laughs> it's a lot of work. A lot of work on this page. This one was floating around for a while. Whew, God, he is so amazing. Wolvie. Wow. I feel like I've gone through the ringer today. It's funny, like I'm, I'm, I'm almost going to need to take a break because, again, I did two hours of, like, lesson material. And then seeing this, it's like my brain's going to need 30 minutes to, like, relax <laughs> before I get into my own work. Good study day, though, for sure. This is awesome. Wow, I love this. No Google Sketch up here, friends. This is doing it the old-fashioned way with skill. And it just has so much more character, you know? This was a, came out so long ago. I don't know what the date was on this, but oh my gosh. Oh, this is a dark DK3 cover. It's pretty in your face like uh i mean uh, as uh, like a front view the tank and all that it's it's an interesting shot again this is looks to me to be all sharpie it may not be but it could be like one of his brush pens i remember though seeing a scan of it uh that was different than this one off of twitter it would have been just floating around online before this and um there was definitely two different colors, although this looks like a pretty legit scan, but I remember this had a slightly different hue than some of the other ink. I guess it kind of still does a little bit down here, too. You can see it. White sometimes will read blue when you scan it, so that could be part of it, too. It gets, like, weird, like, sort of. I don't even know. Like, on my black drawing, sometimes if there's a tiny touch of white anywhere on it, it will look uh, like a illuminates like a weird color because even mark's paper looks like it's like the, the yellow like comes up on it like if i turn it white white it looks different you see how yellow it is sometimes paper will read blue god <laughs> that face is so awesome god damn he really is brilliant. I mean, this is, this is, it's as, it's as good as any illustration that you could ever see in terms of a pen and ink piece. He's just got beautiful, like, all the planes of the face, just all these lines. It's not just about the lines, it's just, they're really, really nicely placed. 
This could have been published, you know, 70 years ago. Or now. Oh, wow. What is this? It feels like it needs to be rotated, but I don't know. Oh, it's the tank from the um, Batman cover. Huh. I don't know why it's, like, zoomed like this. But this is Batman's arm going back. Huh. Oh, this is weird. Is this a plane? I don't know what that is. Oh, sorry. I remember this. This guy feels like he's right out of like an EC horror movie. Or uh, EC horror comic, I mean. Sorry. But yeah, so my guess is that he does all the line work that we saw like in those other pieces and then he'll go in with his scritchy scratchy um, brush pen or something like that and he can go in and put in all this extra detail. It's super wild. I mean, in theory, he could have he could have done all the um, all this stuff that looks like marker. He could have done it with a brush. I mean, cuz there's like I have a brush pen. I think it's Sakura. Um, that you fill with your own ink, and it's a great nylon tip. They're really, really good. They're they're kind of expensive. I think they're like thirty bucks. Um, but uh, yeah, it comes it comes with refillable cartridges of inks that you can use. But you can also use a little sucker thing and um, put in whatever kind of ink you want. But it gets the feel of these these um, pre made brushes that have usually again like an alcohol based ink, and you can use real India ink. But it gets the same like line. There's a speed that you can get with sometimes these uh, man-made um, as opposed to like fur brushes, hair. <clears throat> I don't know why, but they, they seem to work sometimes a little better for some comic book techniques. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me, get something in my throat. What is who say? Is that I don't understand what the watermark is on all these. I I, I felt like I got these off Twitter, but maybe I'm wrong. But I don't know what who say is. Maybe who say took all these photos. Thank you, who say. I want to see this. It's got the killer killer like face shape in there it's not it's it's very like um this is just so cool very busema it's like um, Jim's is more of a kind of like a rectangle. I mean, the, the rectangle is in there, whatever you want to call it. Like, um, but uh, it's fun to see it. It's so, so heavily in this. It's just so, like, man, powerful. He's got big eyes. He drew pretty big eyes on him. Oh, man, this is great. I gotta keep an eye on the clock. What time is it? Okay, I kind of went a little over. I'll, I'll, after this one, we'll see how many more we have left, and then I'll decide if I'm going to continue. So I do need to get to work. This is like almost like a cheat day, but it's an art cheat day. Lessons and geeking out on some Sylvester. Cheat day. <laughs> oh, man. It's... God. If he's able to keep up this level of detail, I, I, I'm i under the impression that, that I, I heard that, that he may have brought someone in to help him with the later issues. I don't know if that's accurate, but I, I thought I heard, heard something like that. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, if um, if he does all the issues on his own and they're inked like this, like with him inking it, man, it'll really be amazing. This is a lot to keep up with, though, for a long series. But... He has had a lot of time to work on it, so it's definitely a possibility. Oh, yeah, these are all the classic um, early previews that we got. <clears throat> the Rat. Beautiful page. 
you can actually see that he was working a little slower on these. You know, there's there's a little tiny bit more, I don't know, finesse would be the right word, but it's not as chaotic as some of the other pieces, but still got that energy. Man, this is so cool looking. It almost reminds me a little bit of um, like Nestor Redondo and Esteban Moroto and some of the stuff that you might see on like the Vampirella comics. Alex Nino. It's like pointy and kind of gives me Vampirella vibes. I have that pen. spread oh this is probably that this could be that batman spread that we've been seeing with batman um kind of leaping forward oh this is cool i remember this damn jeez that's cool looking i'm checking out uh where he keeps the bright spots on the figure with the these the lighter areas booty uh, is, is this Aphrodite 9 that's really cool man <laughs> guy's so good yeah, that's cool oh god look at this kid like there's a couple of weird things going on. She feels really short, and his head is kind of big, but it's still, it's really, really cool. Man, the kid's pants are awesome. Like, There's all kinds of kick-ass parts of this. Yeah, they all have very short legs. Like, even this, um, this dude, like, his legs are tiny compared to, like, the size of his body. It was funny, I couldn't find his signature and then I spotted it, but it was like weird. I was like looking, I was like, oh, he, I'm like, is this Mark? Look like him. Uh, that's cool. Oh, maybe get more whips. Oh, wow, look at this. Damn. He could charge a small fortune for this. I'll tell you what. I tell you what, friends. This was not a cheap piece to pr procure. That's cool. Damn. This is not your normal con sketch for him. <clears throat> I guarantee this cost a bit more because this has got like some work into it. He's got all these demons, this little extra thing. He's really creative, just even with his simple pieces. He comes up with some really good ideas. Damn, this is awesome, too. I don't remember this one. The person that got this must have been like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's like, you know, you, you, you never know when you roll the roulette wheel of getting, like, a sketch cover. And probably it was done at a con. I see, like, the red tablecloth and whatnot. Um... Uh, but, uh, man, you come back a couple, couple hours later, it's like, hey, he got your sketch done, and you get this, you'd be like, oh, you kidding me? This is mine? Thank you, Mark. There we go. Really cool gun. Oh, this is good. So you guys excited about Batman now? Like, this is, this is good, right? Good timing. Jack A. Oh, look at this. This is cool. Almost small. I didn't even notice her other arm for a second. Like, I didn't... I just this area kind of sort of blended in. Wow. He's good with the Copics, too, honestly. He's doing some really, really nice stuff. I mean, he understands... He understands what he's up to. The face looks great. Nice. 
I like how he did her hips at this angle. It really makes it kind of fun and like a little bit more, um, more than just a side view, you know? He gave you, he's got her sort of turning two different directions. It's really cool. Oh, wow. I remember this. Now, I'm not 100% sure what book this was for. I think, I feel like this might have already been printed for something. Well, I could be wrong, but... This is almost too much for, like, regular DC superhero books. Sounds funny to say, but, like, this teeters on, like... It's like, oh, I don't know, like... They wouldn't question someone like Mark, but, like, a new person coming in trying to do, like, a very illustrative style, they might be, like, concerned that it would take too long. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Who's this? She's from one of Mark's, like, the other book. I can't think of what it's called. Oh, wow, look at this. Wow, what the hell is this sketch? Fuck. It's like, it's like this crazy, like, doodle of dragons. I don't know if they're attacking, like, a castle or a floating castle or what it is, but, man, it's cool looking. Look at this. Sexy Wolverine in the woods. He did highlight Wolverine's butt on that one cover for his X-Men when he returned to the X-Men. You got a nice booty shot of Wolverine. Oh yeah, this piece is awesome. I think I have whips of this one. We'll see. I, I feel like I do. Oh, Frog is great. Yeah, is this not as finished? Let's see. Oh, maybe not. Oh man, this is great too. God, Mark, making us all look bad. What are you doing? seen all this work it really it is a shame that he doesn't have more comics out so i have my glasses in my mouth um but uh yeah like that's my only regret is the stuff is so good i would love to see like more but at least we've got a mini series coming out god you know seeing that last piece kind of made me think of this it's like 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 the analogy that i'll use for mark and like other comic book artists and look there's tons and tons of incredible comic artists so don't take this the wrong way but mark is a little like ian mckaig where like ian mckaig like if you get like a, the art of star wars books and you look through those books ian mckaig for whatever reason his work stands out his characters look a little cooler his drawings have just like a little bit better like design element to them, meaning that like even if he draws something simple, like someone standing there, it's just got like a little bit more pizzazz than than other people. Now Dermot Power is really, really good. Doug Chang's really good. I mean, there's tons and tons of people that do killer killer shit in those books. But Mark is kind of like that, where it's it's like other people could draw this stuff, but man, not many can make it look this badass like but it is similar to ian mckay because i always like when i was when i was getting introduced to ian mckay through the art of star wars books and I, I would see his stuff i'd always be like ah oh, this has got to be that guy oh yeah and then i would check the credit and it would be his and it was like okay for some reason this guy's stuff is just like the best <laughs> my opinion not not uh my opinion but like like that that's my reaction to it would be like that but there's tons of styles and things that you can do in comics that are great but mark definitely has some magic fairy dust in his um his approach and eye and just the way that he draws things god damn I like 
I'm kind of speechless on some of these. Like, this is so good. <laughs> Fucking A, man. <laughs> God. If you know, you know, right, friends? <laughs> Who's with me? Oh, John Buscema. So I told you there might be some other stuff. But Buscema's a great example. Buscema's got that same ballsy energy. This arm is, like, pretty long, but, man, it still looks so cool. It's interesting because this arm is kind of long, and then the other arm with the, sh the shield is, like, almost vanished because even though the shield is there, it's, like, tight shot, but... It's a really great little sketch. Oh, yeah, these are good. I'll slide this around a sec. Oh, my gosh. Wow. It's like doing a little bit of the kind of like... Um, it's not surreal, but but uh, like like very stylish lines like in the sky. Oh man, this is great too. Die bitches. Rise of the Magi. Uh. Oh yeah, this is sort of a work in progress on this. It's interesting because this is actually a nice blend between uh, Mark when he goes way over the top with like the um, Franklin Booth look and something that you might see another inker at like Top Cow do. Like these, do you see these like line weights and things like that? Like these are standard things that you might see in, in comic book inking. This is a little more the normal lane that, you know, you would learn and whatnot. And then... When he when he puts it on eleven, this is obviously going backwards because it's a uh, work some progress. Um, yeah, he gets this other thing that's like just like incredible. I don't remember this piece either. It's funny. I remember saving a Stanley piece, but I didn't realize it was this. Pretty funny. That's really cute. I wonder if he actually drew this for Stan. If he did, that's really neat. Like, it would feel good to give him one. Like, this stuff. God. Damn. Wow, that's really cool too. Okay, let me see. I I seriously okay, God, there's still a lot. Oh geez. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to end it here. All right, you guys have a great day. I went way over what I was planning on doing, but it was really fun, obviously, to do, and I'm sure anyone that stuck out the video this long, I, I really do genuinely hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that I didn't ramble too much about the side stuff and um yeah, you know, I'm like all of you. I'm just a fan of Mark's that's been following his work for a long time, and I'm really enthusiastically looking forward to this Batman book. So you guys have a great day. I'll be back next week with another video. And, um, yeah, you know, let's take a little peeky peek. Oh, that's good. <laughs> we can do these quick. Oh, colored. Ah, oh, it looks nice. I don't know who colored that. He probably said, I was like, oh, God, look at this. Jeez. Um, but yeah, you guys have a great day and uh, best of luck with your work if you're an artist and you're working on your stuff and just realize, you know, when you see stuff like this, this is, you know, uh, almost a 40 year career for him now, um, you know, getting to this level. So, you know, enjoy the work, study it, try to learn from it, emulate it and whatnot. But, uh, you know, don't get impatient if you're not able to get it get it th at this kind of an insane level because he's really really good are these whips or what is going on mm -hmm. all right i'll talk to you guys later have a good one bye wow that's some wild thinking this is like kenneth rocafort when it gets like so shapey